So if I was applying again to medicine in 2024, before we get into the technical stuff, the very first thing that I would do was understand my why. Now that seems a little bit woo woo, but it's really important to understand why you're going into medicine because it's the thing that's gonna help you stay motivated. It's going to help you direct all of your work experience and all the things that you do. So it's such an important thing and often really overlooked. Even if you just spend five minutes just deciding exactly what it is you want out of a career in medicine and why you are driven to go towards it, that will help be your true north at times when you're struggling, which is inevitable as part of the medical application. Now, as I go through this, I'm going to start with the broad concepts and then whittle down and get into the nitty gritty of the more specific stuff as we get to it. But these are the tactics that I used when I got into both medicine and dentistry and completed both degrees. And it's the same technique that I teach all of the students that are on our program that we've got over 93% success with, with getting students into their first choice medical and dental school at the first attempt. So the next thing is to get a rough idea of what universities you want to go to. The reason for that is because you need to understand where the bar is. And basically when you're applying, you're gonna have one of two outcomes. You're either going for a specific university, usually a very competitive one, like maybe the London universities or an Oxbridge or just maybe a Russell Group University. But if that's the case, then you need to understand what UCAP score do I need? Is there a different exam that I need to take? What kind of work experience do they want? All of the really important stuff, and you need to know that as soon as possible so that you can start preparing your application to satisfy the needs of that specific university. Now, the other goal or the other bar that people aim for is that I just want to get into medicine or just want to get into dentistry, and I don't care where I go as long as I get in. So there we start need to start understanding the minimum requirements generally for basically some of the less competitive medical schools. They're all very competitive. It is still very difficult to get into, but it's just useful to understand what is the minimum or maybe the average that I need to aim for for a typical student that will gain access to a medical or dental degree course. Now, the third broad concept before we get into the nitty gritty is that I would recommend that you get your parents involved. Unless you are kind of in your late 20s and you have your own career and you're supporting yourself, I would really recommend that it really helps to have your parents involved because they obviously want you to do well and I'm sure they will support you on this endeavor, but there are lots of things that they can do to help support you in little ways or at least understand the areas of focus that you need to place your attention on so that they can kind of point you in the right direction. And in fact, we've done a free course specifically for parents to how they can support their children who apply to medicine. So if you want to check that out here, there are no gimmicks. It's completely for free. It's about two and a half, three hours worth of material that they can just watch at their own pace. They can watch it at double speed. So it's very easy to get through. And that way they will know exactly what they need to do to support you and maximize your chances of success. So then specifically, I'm going to talk you through in order what you should do. Now, this is the proven process that, like I say, I take all of my students through and has that success rate that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to talk you through the steps that you need to do to assure you gain success. Now, the very first one is strategy. I sit down with students for a very long time, for hours to map out the exact process or the exact set of steps that we're going to do to maximize that student's chances of success. And it's a very personal thing and it's uh, very bespoke in that sense that it's not kind of like a cookie cutter approach. It's, you have to look at what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, where you want to go, and all of the details that make up and the ingredients that make up the recipe of a really fantastic application. So really think strategically about how are you going to approach this application? One of the best things that you can do is get one of the free resources off the FutureDoc website, uh, which I'll link to in the description below. And we have a timeline that you can download for free that tells you exactly what's coming up, when the steps are. And so you can plan exactly when you need to start preparing for each step and what you can be doing at each stage of the year to make sure that you're maximally prepared. Now, the next thing that you need to do is gain outstanding work experience. And you will have seen me speak in other videos, particularly this one here, where I do a deep dive on work experience, that there are three types of work experience. So you have shadowing where you're typically in a hospital or a GP practice following a doctor around. Then you have volunteer work to show that you can give back to the community and care for others. And then you typically will have paid work where you really demonstrate those transferable skills of responsibility. You might be in charge for the keys or handling money, or you might be doing all sorts of things that kind of draw parallels with the skills required to make a good doctor. So check out that video to find out exactly how to set up your work experience in the best way possible. Then the next stage is all about the aptitude tests. 
Now, at the moment, when we're filming this, they have just got rid of the BMAT, which was the exam required for Oxford and Cambridge, and about five other universities on top of that. And still to this day, at the time of recording, we don't know what they're going to do to replace it. But what is almost certain is that you will probably be sitting the UCAT, and if you're a graduate, that might be accompanied by the GAMSAT as well. And again, depending on what's going to happen with this BMAT, whether they're going to replace it or universities are just going to adopt the UCAT instead, we will know whether there is an extra exam that we might consider taking. However, what we need to do is make sure that we prepare well for the UCAT. And as I always say to students, the UCAT is both sim simultaneously underestimated and overvalued. It is an important part and maybe the most important part, if not in the top two or three. However, it is not the only thing that makes up a good application. The other things that I'm going to talk about here make the balance of a really well-rounded, solid applicant. So don't think that all it's all about the UCAT and nothing else. Don't ignore all the other things that I'm talking about because it's really important to maximize every single bucket of the application. Now, paradoxically, although the UCAT is overvalued, it is equally underestimated. People don't realize how much work they need to put in to make sure they get a score that's going to at least get them over the threshold required to be invited to interview. They don't understand the kind of work and time and prep that it requires to ingrain all of the techniques, the speed of the exam, and just get to grips with the basics so that they can put themselves in a position to score highly and, and kind of improve on a good trajectory. Now, I would recommend that you check out this video here where I talk about the three phases of UCAT preparation and give you a bit of a revision plan and an idea of when to start, how much time to spend, and really there we're just laying out a plan for how you're going to succeed with that exam. Now the next thing you need to do is nail the personal statement. Now there is, is up in the air as to what they're going to do with the personal statement again at the time of recording. The, the, essentially what they're thinking of is breaking it down into five or so questions. Which essentially is just structuring the personal statement how it should be for you. Whereas you know, when we do this with our team we basically make sure that those questions and areas are covered anyway but it's still essentially the same thing. Now, there are some universities, yes, that don't look at the personal statement. Maybe they'll look at it at interview stage, but it's still really important, not only for the universities that are gonna use it, but also to organize your thoughts, your experiences, all the things that you want to put forward of yourself as a good case of being a doctor or dentist to make sure that you know in your head when it comes to interview and they're asking you these sorts of things, that you have them at the forefront of mind at the very least. And obviously at the other end of the spectrum, it is a massive factor. You take places like Kings that really value work experience and that is the way that they ascertain that through the personal statement. So it's so important that you present that in a really well-written, well-structured and just great way to kind of put you in the best possible light. The personal statement is something that you should start cooking about May. Now, it's a bit like catching a fly. You don't want to get there too soon. You don't want to get there too late. But the personal statement, you want to time just right because most likely you are accumulating experience as you're preparing your application. So you want to leave it late enough so that you have done those experiences. So you've got lots to talk about in the personal statement. But at the same time, you don't want to leave it so late that you're rushing because the main thing with that, with the personal statement is getting other people to review it. Our students, the ones that really rush it and come last minute and ask for our advice and our, you know, our input and they're doing it last minute, don't make the most out of that opportunity of having someone who can put some fresh eyes on it, give some advice, because when they're having to rush to implement the advice and action, the recommendations from that, they really don't give themselves the best chance to make it as good as it could possibly be. The next important step is choosing the right medical schools. Now, this is probably arguably the most underestimated one because choosing the right medical schools for you, for your individual strengths, what you got in the UCAT, how good your personal statement is, how good your work experience is, how well you think you can interview. All of these things are a unique formula for you as an individual that are suited to certain universities. Literally every year on our Future Doc program, we get people who come to us who have maybe failed to get in maybe two, three times, and we look at them and look at some of the stuff they're doing. Yes, okay, the personal statement isn't quite where it needs to be. Yes, they're not prepared properly for the UCAT and they could do that better. Yes, they probably could do with better work experience, but often a small detail that is so simple to change but so effective is those four medical school choices or four dental school choices if you're applying to dentistry. But these are the things that make such a big difference and it's so nuanced and personal to you. 
that choosing those four is critical to get you in front of the interview panel. The way I see it with my students is we basically want to do two things. And I know this is very simplistic, but really num goal number one is get them in front of the interview panel. And I'm so confident in our ability to train people that once we've got them in front of the interview panel, all we need to do is just impress the interview panel enough or the MMI circuit or whatever the equivalent is enough to then be offered a place. So, you know, it's very simple. Just do what you need to, to get in front of the, the medical school and speak to them at interview, nail the interview to get the offer. And it's when you break it down, it's that simple, but obviously there are lots of stages to make sure that each of those two steps are nailed properly. Because that brings us on to the final step, other than getting the grades, obviously, to get in with your A-levels or degree or whatever it is, is actually getting through the interview. Now, this, as far as getting an offer is concerned, is the final hurdle. And again, a massive mistake that I see people make is thinking that the interview is all about just cramming in the two weeks before. The interview is the culmination of all that preparation that you've done before. All your work experience, all your reading, all your exposure to medicine or dentistry as you're going through this process and the reflection that you're making on that. It's such a critical factor. And so, like I say, another massive mistake people make is to think it's just all about a quick preparation just to get through and tick the boxes. It's about using that time before to become the real deal so that when you get in front of the interview panel or get on that MMI circuit, they can just tell that you are the kind of person that will make a fantastic doctor. And that is more about being rather than trying to, like I say, blag it or pull the wool over people's eyes or trying to convince people. It's that becoming by putting in the work in the 18 months prior to that. Like I always say to my students, if you're, some, if you're starting medical school, let's say September 2027, you'll be submitting your application in September 2026 and you should begin preparing around September 2025. So it's something to bear in mind that you really, it's a kind of two year ordeal and especially the year prior to submitting your application, you really need to be putting the work in to build a very strong application. If you'd like to find out how to build what I would call the perfect application and maximize your chances of success, I recommend you check out this video here, which will tell you a little bit about our program and how we got 93% success last year with getting people into their first choice medical school at the first attempt and the same method that we've had year on year to get over 90% every single year with all of our students. So thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in one of those videos.